Hey YouTubers, um, Snap on John 100 here with the other side of those brakes. I ran out of time and light last night, so I'm finishing them today. Um, right up here is the, um, that's the spot where I was talking about that this pin goes into, and I cleaned that off. I had to knock it out. What you use to knock this out is um, a small ball peen hammer and then you take a, um, a deep socket, I used a 3 8 a quarter inch 3 8 and then I took a plastic mallet and uh, pounded uh, on the socket and that pushed this out and then I was able to clean it up and then I, I ran a file in there like I said if I was at work I'd be using a um, carbide burr but I don't have that here so I'm just gonna I just ran a file in it okay so now I gotta put that back together um, the rotors on and um, to push the caliper back see this the caliper uh, piston uh, I have a as you, as you saw in my toolbox I have a uh, caliper piston tool but it's uh, it's designed for dual piston calipers it's a little more cumbersome so the fastest way for me since I don't have a giant at work I have a giant pair of channel lock pliers that are about 15 inches or 18 inches long so I can just grab onto it and squeeze it together but here I use an old pad that's thin and an ordinary C-clamp. This is a 5 inch uh, or 4 inch Craftsman C-clamp and I just put this up against the piston uh, put the back of the C-clamp against the back of the caliper and then I run this up against the um, old pad and, that, and then I push the piston back with that okay so right now what I'm going to do is uh, grease grease this pin oh here's the socket I use I'm going to grease this pin up and uh, put that part all back together then I'm going to clean up this um, carrier and I'll be putting that back together okay here's what everything looks like um, that is now uh, put back together and sliding the rubber boots on the outside of it um, the piston I'll have to push back in a few minutes I haven't done that yet um, but now I'm ready to put Here's the um, carrier with the uh, pads already in it, installed. And I will be uh, greasing these two bolts. These are the two um, bolts. They're, um, I think those are, those are 12 millimeter bolts. And um, I will be um, putting some grease on the threads and putting them together in a second. Okay, I got the calipers on. I have to just put this caliper bolt right here down there I have to put that I have to install that um, I'm gonna wipe it off and regrease it but I just um, want to show you how far I've gone with this and um, I apologize also for having to be choppy and so you can't really see me doing anything but this job is so filthy and nasty that um, my camera will be completely covered with grease and filth and so um, I'm having to change gloves it seems like every three seconds anyway so uh, I won't be able if you have any questions about how anything goes you can um, post a comment or you can um, email me or whatever but you can post a comment so uh, if you have any questions but up here most calipers have two caliper bolts this particular vehicle does not um, I really haven't seen any other ones that don't have two except for this car but um, it'd be the same thing you just put the caliper on and then you put the two caliper bolts in this one you just slide the pin over the um, into this place right there okay so now I'm going to uh, put install the the bolt right down there and then uh, it's the bolt right there I got I'm gonna clean the threads off uh, I pushed everything back with the, that's my um, piston compressor tool I use for home and so Here's a silhouette of a pad. Um, on the pad, I greased this area right here on the outside pad, and on the inside pad, I did the center where the piston comes out. The reason being, as I said once before, is um, the way they make noise is they set up a resonance. If you put grease on there, um, it can't resonate all together because it slides there so it breaks up that resonant frequency so you can't it keeps them quiet. okay I got both wheels on 
uh, what I'm going to be using to tighten the um, wheels is what's called a torque stick and they're calibrated by how uh, big a diameter they are and they're also color coded an orange one is 80 pound feet um, of torque and the business end is 21 millimeter okay so for this car it needs to be torqued at 80 pound feet so to make it easier I'm just using an impact with a torque stick the way they work is the impact tightens by hammering and when this gets to its um, basically designed weight um, torque the thing just flexes and it won't tighten anymore so that's how it works all right car is finished it's lowered down the oil has been checked and the most important thing to do when you change your brakes or work on your brakes and I will be doing that right now the most important thing you can do is you make sure you go make sure that you push the brake pedal and pump it up because if you don't do that the first time you put it in reverse or drive and put the brakes on you'll have no brakes because you pulled the piston back as far as it would go now we're going so now to be going on a test drive to make sure the brakes are all right okay i got a little bit of belt squeal I'm just gonna make sure we miss that car There we go. Now well, we're doing good. Oh my gosh, there's another car exactly the same. How nutty is that? It's even got the same bike rack on the back. All right. So, down this side of the street. Safest. All right. Now, we're going to see how the brakes are. Uh, this is all loose gravel. They just boiled it and put new stones down, so this isn't a really good place to test the brakes. Just slow it down. Yeah, they're going to be great. And it's just now starting to rain giant drops. It's starting to come down. All we got to do is go up to the other street. You get to see a scenic view of upstate New York about five miles or three miles about three miles south of Lake Ontario halfway between Buffalo and Rochester it's as flat as a pancake up here and now we're seeing cornfields but okay let's see how the brakes work good what you want to do is make a couple of panic stops without locking up the brakes most cars have anti-lock brakes nowadays mine does not so um, you run it up to about 40 or 50 miles an hour hit the brakes see we're going up to about 40 right here oh and there's a car behind me so I can't be acting nutty so anyway now we're uh, basically done making sure the brakes are seated but they work great my wife will be happy and I will be glad that the motor car is here it was time anyway and the rotors were um, one the one on the right side was wearing unevenly anyway because uh, um, the calipers were not um, floating because the uh, slider on there was frozen on both sides so I freed those both up it's really important when you're doing your brakes you want to make sure you do that all right youtubers um, looking forward to seeing you guys next videos and uh